everyone, I'm Coach Morgan Thibault, Heart Rate Training Specialist with Fuse to Fitness, and I'm here to welcome you to your treadmill training. Thank you so much for giving this program a try. I've designed this program for beginners through advanced athletes. The program will meet you where you are, and we're going to do that by basing the entire training off of your personalized base pace. How do we determine your base pace? If you get on the treadmill and you can walk for 30 minutes or run for 30 minutes or whatever extended period of time, you use the talk test. If you can hold a conversation at that pace, that's your base pace. So for a beginner, that might be a walking pace at maybe three or three and a half miles per hour versus an advanced athlete who may be running or jogging at their base pace at more like five or six miles per hour. Wherever you're starting from, we're gonna use that base to build on every week as you advance through the program. So this is a 30-day program, and we are gonna gradually work on improving your personal speed, endurance, and power. Each week, we'll build on one of those specific areas. Your power will be speed training. Your strength will be incline. And then your endurance will be the duration or the length of time that you work. We're also going to incorporate some upper body and some core exercises to help round out the training program. There's one master workout that you're going to follow for the entire 30 days. And each week you're going to change one component of the workout to focus and hone in on that strength area. Every time you work out, I want you to start with the warm up, which will include some pre run dynamic stretches um, and help support a better range of motion and really prepare your body for the impact and the work to come. After your workout, I want you to follow the cool down, which will include some static stretches as well to help relieve your body from that tension. I'm going to take you through your warm up dynamic movements. So, after you've warmed up for about two to three minutes on your treadmill, walking or jogging at your base pace, I want you to come off and you're going to do about 30 seconds of butt kicks. So just a little bit of hop side to side, bringing your heel towards your butt. Now if this is too high impact, I want you to stay on the floor. You're going to step side to side and pull your heel in towards your butt. Then I want you to move into some leg swings. You can hold onto the treadmill for balance, stay tall, and just let that leg kick forward and back. We want to open up the hip flexor, get some movement through the hips. And you're going to do about 10 swings forward and back on each leg. Do it laterally, so side to side right here. Swinging in front of the body and out to the side. Hold on to that treadmill for some balance if you need it. We're going to come into a windmill. So you're going to open the feet outside the hips, arms out to the side of the big T formation. You're going to rotate opposite hand, opposite toe. Push your hips back. You want a nice long stretch in the back of your legs. You need to bend your knees a little bit. If your hamstrings are tight, that's okay. We are trying to warm them up. All right. We are going to review block one, your first set of work. This is act. We're headed into our speed block where we're focusing on building power. This is a 10 minute set. And you're going to start with your base pace. When you look at your workout sheet, you'll see the left hand column shows you the time, the duration that you're going to hold, the pace, which is in the center column. And on the far right, it'll show you if there's any incline needed. For this block, we're just going to leave the incline at 1%. Follow the pacing throughout the set. You'll hold your base for a minute, and then for 30 seconds, you're going to increase your base by one mile per hour. You'll drop back to your original base for 30 seconds. Then you're going to increase again, but this time by one and a half miles per hour, dropping back to the original base to recover. You're going to progress in this 30 second on, 30 second off pattern. You have some walking recoveries there built in in between as well. Remember, since this is meeting you where you are, everybody's base pace is going to be different. So if I'm a beginner and I'm, my base is at three miles per hour and I'm looking at this workout for the speed, I need to make sure that I'm going to be comfortable at my top pace in this set being five and a half miles per hour because the biggest increase you're going to make is by two and a half miles per hour from your base. And if you're not comfortable there at five and a half, what I want you to do is to lower that base or only increase your top speed and hold there. 
All right, let's review block two. Block two, we get into our body weight strength work, where I'm going to incorporate some upper body and core movements to help round out the program for you. This is a five minute block, and I'm going to walk you through the movements so that you can see what you have to do. You have five moves. You're gonna perform each exercise for one minute each. You take as many breaks as you need to and just complete uh, the reps with good control. Okay, your first movement is a tricep dip. So you can either use the side of your treadmill or you can use a sturdy bench or chair. I'm gonna show you both options. You wanna have your hands right outside the hips, chest tall, shoulders down and back. You wanna stay close to your bench or treadmill. So you're gonna drop your elbows back, holding that body weight, putting a lot of pressure on the back of the arm. Don't let your elbows flare open. You wanna squeeze them behind. And so here for a minute, it's not really about the repetitions, it's more about the endurance that you're building. So if you were using a bench, it's gonna be a similar setup. I'm gonna place the hands, keep the chest and shoulders back, and dip right there. Second movement in this series is push-ups. I'm gonna show you a couple of variations for this. Hands are gonna be just outside the shoulders here. Plant the hands, you can be on your toes, Nice strong plank position, you wanna pull the belly under. As you drop down, your chest should come to elbow level. Elbows in line with the chest, squeezing back. You can also drop the knees down and continue to push up in this position. You can also elevate your body on a bench. The, the higher you elevate the body, the easier it will be because you're taking away body weight pressure from your chest and shoulders. Placing the hand. If you elevate, you want your chest to be over the bench in between your hands here. From the toes, still dropping to that elbow level and pushing back. Our third movement in this set is a mountain climber, a slow mountain climber for core and shoulder stability. So again, you're gonna be in a plank or a push-up position. Pull the knee towards the chest with good control. You're right here for a minute. Another option is to be elevated here. Same push-up position, pulling the knee in towards the bench. If neither of those options are working for you, you can also do this from standing. What I want you to do is have the arms out in the front and you're gonna pull the knee up to those hands, up to the hands. You wanna to try to get your knee to the hip height if you can, and if you need to hold on to something for balance, that's fine. Our final move in this body weight series is a lunge. You have the option of putting your toe on the back of your treadmill, taking a nice long stance away. Keep your hips and shoulders square to the front of the body. You're gonna drop straight down and push straight up. This elevation of the back foot will challenge your core and stabilization. And if it's too much, you can bring your foot down to the floor and perform the lunge here. You wanna keep the chest tall, and your aim is to hit that 90 degree bend in the legs. You want to make sure that your knee is not pushing forward in front of your toe. And if that single leg work is too much for you right now, keep both feet planted underneath your hips and you're going to go for one minute of squats instead of lunges. Okay, so block three is our strength focus block where we're going to really focus on inclines as the challenge. This is a six minute set and what I want you to do is put more emphasis on the incline than on your speed. So you've got your base pace, which you've been using. However, with three or four or eight or 10% incline added, that needs to be what's gonna really shine here in the challenge, not necessarily your speed. So make sure that your base pace is still something where you can hold that conversational pace too. Okay team, block four, this is our endurance focus block. This is where we're gonna focus on the duration of the pace. It's only a five minute set, but the pace increases pretty significantly. So focus on building from your base and really challenging your effort. Okay team, block four, this is our endurance focus block. This is where we're gonna focus on the duration of the pace. It's only a five minute set, but the pace increases pretty significantly. So focus on building from your base and really challenging your effort. Let's take a look at our post-run cool down. So you want to make sure you take about two to three minutes to recovery walk. Try to slow your heart rate down and come down off of your workout. 
Then we're going to use some static stretches. So I want you to stretch the back of your leg first, the hamstring. So if you have the range of motion and flexibility, just bring that leg up onto the treadmill and just lean forward. You're going to feel that stretch across the back of the leg. You want to try to relax here, relax the quad, and take long deep breaths. You want to hold this stretch for about three to five nice deep breaths, both sides. Okay, that's not quite up to your range of motion just yet. What I want you to do is stick that heel forward and then hinge your butt back and just reach down to where you have a good range of motion and you're getting that stretch in, in the back of the hamstring, not a strain. You want to feel a good stretch. If you can reach the toes, great. If not, pull the toes back towards you to help stretch out your calf too. Second stretch, we want to stretch the front of the leg, the quad. So standing, holding onto the treadmill for balance. You want to grab onto the ankle. Pull the heel towards your butt, push your hips forward, keep your knees close together, and that's going to help stretch out your quads. And we also want to open up the hips and stretch out our glutes. Holding on to the treadmill for balance, you're going to cross one leg over. Make sure your foot is above the knee and just sit down into that hip stretch. You're going to feel a pretty intense deep stretch through your glutes, your butt, and in your hips. The way you can do that stretch is you can lie down on the floor and just cross your leg over. And this might be intense enough. And if it's not, you can just lift that foot off the floor and you'll feel that beautiful stretch and opening in the hip. Our final stretch, we're just gonna open up our upper body, hands at the front of the treadmill, take a big lean forward, opening the back, the shoulders, and getting another nice stretch in your hamstrings here. Well, each one of your stretches are about three to four or five nice deep slow breaths.